In orthopedics, there is a term called capsular pattern, which often is hard to explain, but what it means is it's simply the pattern of limitation that shows up in a joint when that joint is inflamed. And it's quite consistent for everyone, regardless of the cause of the inflammation. So in the human body, probably the most common place that we would really want to check someone's capsular pattern is the hip because hip arthritis is so common and some people will have hip arthritis and they kind of worry or wonder if they do and maybe you'll say oh actually I think you do. Other people will say my hip hurts and they're afraid they have hip arthritis and you can do these tests and say well seems like you don't because you don't have a capsular pattern. If you have arthritis, you have inflammation. If you have inflammation, you have a capsular pattern. Here's what the capsular pattern looks like in the hip. The two, the two uh, ranges that we're most interested in are medial rotation and flexion. So we're going to do the medial rotation from a 90 degrees flexed position and most people would say normal range is around 45 degrees starting from this position so i take her through that range she's got it and a little bit more there's no hard end feel at the end of the test it's presumably not painful to you so so she passes <laughs> um, and then right from here, we can go right into testing flexion. So all I do is see how much flexion she's got. And most people would say you should have at least maybe 125 degrees, meaning if this was 90, you should have another 35 from there. And again, she's got that and more. She doesn't have a capsular pattern. Therefore, if she came into me and said, I'm worried I have hip arthritis, I could say, well, you don't, there's no evidence that you do. The one other little thing to say about this is that anytime you see a capsular pattern presented and people say, this, 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 this are limited, it's always listed in decreasing proportion. So you'd say, Medial rotation is the most limited, and then flexion is a little less limited, and then there might be two more motions listed beyond that, depending on how thorough people are being. But the reality is, is that if, if you have good range of motion, good reasonable end feel, pain-free range of motion on the two first tests on the list, you don't really have to worry about the rest of them. If a person has hip arthritis, usually it's quite obvious that these motions are limited and they have a hard end feel and they're painful. Um, and of course, the more the arthritis advances, the more limited the motions become. So for example, if a person had moderately advanced uh, hip arthritis, the tests might look like this. I get to the starting position for the medial rotation and I might only get maybe 10 degrees or thereabouts and I would feel a, a strong stop in the movement and she would feel discomfort at that point. Or if we were testing flexion, I might only get this far, only a few degrees past 90 and I would feel again a hard stop in the movement and she would feel pain somewhere around her hip joint. 